Hello there, and welcome once again to my little arty corner of the internet on YouTube. I have other little arty, arty crafty corners though, and those can all be found in the description box below. Firstly, thank you everybody for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, and just taking some time to watch my videos. Um, they tend to be quite long because once I get engrossed in art, I forget to try and keep it to a certain time. But that perhaps is my style. Um, perhaps more of a tutorial than a quick look through, though today it could be a quite quick one because I, um, I've got quite a day ahead in some ways. I've, it's account, take my paperwork to the accountant day and I need to make sure I've got everything paperwork, physical, in the box before I do that, as well as um, thinking through things that she may need to know about what some of the things are, possibly. But I know she'll come back to me with queries about things as she goes through it, because we've done this many times before. And I really need to come round before I even think about driving. So <laughs> it's just a bit of a day, but we'll be fine. So yesterday I lacked an awful lot of sleep. I'm a bit better today. I had a better night's sleep after leaving my window open um, on what turned out to be a very frosty night morning, but I slept. So my house is freezing. Um, obviously you don't leave the heating on with the windows open. Well, I don't. And um, so it's going to take a little while for it to warm up. Thank goodness for heated blankets is all I can say. So um, heated lap blankets. Well, actually I've got a heated pad behind my back. Um, to ease my stiff back still because it's still a little bit but the heat really does help. So yesterday I sort of rambled my way through this lovely tangle pattern Dealis. Dealis? Dealis? I don't know but that one and um, I woke up this morning and I thought oh oh I wonder what if <laughs> it's typically me I wonder what if I had something to the ends of these little patterns. So that's exactly what I've got here. And I will just zoomy zoom in for you so you can see. And can you see I've put little little finials on the designs. And with some of them I put that kind of middle bar in, if you like, that sometimes sticks out. It depends how I draw it. And use that as a place to pop little embellishments on. This one I thought because often I think about keeping the shape as it is and forget that it's okay to add stuff on the outside or to alter the outer casing, as it were, of the pattern. Because sometimes that's about, sometimes I feel, I'm beginning to understand that may be all that you can do sometimes. You know, you get to a point where you could, or some lend themselves to that. So I've got some flux type shapes here. I did some spirals down here. I didn't do too much in here, like little petals. So it turns it into a little flower. And I, I quite like that. Um, I also looked at um, stark black and white. And um, I'm just going to, oh gosh, turning the heat down because I've suddenly started getting too hot. Um, so I thought about things like that and adding patterns in various places. But it was these little finials that I quite like. Um, to add some interest, some perhaps more successfully than others. This one I, I quite like as well, is why I've put those lines around this part here and just added um, a kind of aura there. And that helps that little spiral shape there to stand out. So there are lots and lots of things to do. And going, applying things to the outside that change the outside of the, the shape, the fragment, is quite nice. Could cause problems if you want to put it in a grid unless you create it as part of the grid, you know, create that to fit in the grid. Today's pattern is um, Shantara and I think it's another one by Debbie New. Um, hashtag Tangled Pursuits, I think that's Debbie New. I could be wrong. Um, and this took me I don't know how many attempts to, to draw it in a way that made sense to me because I did have a look at the original tangle and the shape that was there 
and it's more like this sort of and the more I was drawing it the more I was getting a bit frustrated with myself and the shape I could not replicate this shape reliably so that it could become a nicely repeating pattern so I thought I got to the end here and I thought okay I got to the end here to this one these were added later and I thought let's let's try a triangular shape and suddenly a bit of clarity came with this kind of shape and so I went back and I did this in, in squares and then I thought why don't I start this at the corner and add rice shapes here and so then I get a very symmetrical version that's quite similar you can see here and where I've ordered and, and, and all sorts of things and it would be an awful lot easier to replicate the shape now I don't know if this is an existing fragment I haven't gone and looked in the primer or anywhere else um, I've just reached this so I always say that well, I don't always say it but I am saying it as if I always say it but sometimes as you work on iter iterations on explorations on variations that you come across a variant that is similar to something else or the same as something else and I just keep working with it I don't stop and say oh I've hit fragment or tangle pattern such and such um, having two opposite each other in a square is quite nice because you get this interesting shape in the middle um, for that I would because I was drawing this and I'm not alert still um, I think if I was going to do this in a pattern I'd put pencil lines in so I could have this sort of matching up um, but just half of them on their own and have that feeling of that frame and the rice shapes and the darkness there um, it really does it, it really it really is lovely I think it is lovely and it is this but it's stretching and changing that shape a little bit um, the shadow here makes all the difference I've used um, Carbothello chalk pastel and a, a paper stump tortillon whatever to blend the colour out and you, there's so many ways of doing that this almost looks like a pair of hills with the sky and the moon and I think Shantara means moon and water I think that's what the, 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 the translation of it is from Thai I think it is or you know um, there so it still looks like moon over perhaps hills or moon over a um, very stylized wave I suppose um, and of course I've you know, piled moons up and um, created this these are fun to create now then let me just get I'm going to create, drive you all crazy by going to the front of my book and a pen and glasses yeah it's one of those days so if I very quickly take you through how I draw these yep it's not a fountain pen it's just the first pen I've picked up today so the original one is sort of an arc from nearly one corner if I pop in see a bit better I did just press zoom but there we go from nearly one corner to about the middle of um, the adjacent side so I've popped a dot in and I'm going to curve there then we're going to curve to a little less than halfway along again leaving a gap between that target dot and then it's a curve out in and out again and then that shape that's that's the fragment, I think, or the best I can draw the version um, that is in today's guide. But I sort of took this and I moved this point here and this point here. You'll see what I mean. So that stroke's equivalent to this one. That pen stroke is equivalent to this one. And now I need that kind of 
um, M shape going on here. And my love of symmetry means that it goes mostly in the middle and then I can add that seed. So that's that's my version, which I quite like, or a version I've chosen to do. These, these ones that are floating, I just put the corner dots in for them and then drew just the arc of the rice shape there, that arc of the rice shape there, and then just popped this in like so. And that's quite nice. And if I, if I show you, I'll zoom back out. Here's a version that I've added shadow to and I've popped it underneath here. I think I should have popped it underneath there. Um, I think I just prefer, I'll start again. Pop the shadow there to give the illusion that this outside piece is almost framing something that's behind it. It's like we're looking down to the purple. Here I, I added shadow on the outside so that this, this shape and dot circle appear floating over it. So that's a really nice variation. Um, these ones, it's really quite, you know, it's doing this, which I think is bales. And I am going to pop, I'm going to put, there's an imaginary line here. So I am going to pop dots in where I want these shapes to go. And I popped two circles there. So I replicate this, but you could put one big one in or a series of them. Um, the possibilities there are endless, I think. This works nicely. And it was from putting this into a triangle. It works nicely in a triangle that I came up with this bales kind of thing. So again, we get that kind of shape going on. Um, so like this one here and variations are plenty going on. Um, Yeah, so that works. Um, I also, on the triangles, did the dots so that that shape floats away from, or is floating in the middle of the triangle rather than attached to the edges. So I'm sure People use those dots, I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive I haven't invented it and must have come across it somewhere else. So other shapes. This was an interesting one because there's two possible ways of doing this. I'm just going to do single versions. So there's this one. Um, it is possible to fit another one in on the other side if you make this either this one much smaller over that that side or the the, the seed shape wider. But the other positioning for this shape is to have where these rice shape seed shapes on the edge instead of them joining on the side at the point. And that's it's really quite cute. I do like that one. And of course, it is possible to get two of them in. But what I would do is I would put dots to aim for, but I zoom in again. Oh, wrong one. So I've put dots, but instead of right on the point, to either side of the point. So these would be places for me to aim for. And with the rice shapes, 
and then this completing shape. So I've left a gap between there. Actually, that is not on my sheet here, but I think that works quite nicely. And I, this area of adding these areas of black around the outside helps possibly to bring those shapes out. I say possibly because I don't really know for sure. If anything, perhaps it overwhelms it, but I think black running through the middle would, would certainly help as well, possibly. So, and the same kind of idea here is that we're going to have these, they, these shapes can come from the point, but these two dots going to leave a space between them instead of having one dot on that side like we did here we'll have two but separated just to give a bit of air between these shapes like that and this one I'll just pop those there so that's quite nice um, other shapes I did look at a semicircle and use this as a way to get the shape there. It doesn't really translate well. Let me try doing these rice shapes from a point on the curved side. And that is a better representation. How you bring that shape out is, um, well, there are many ways. And of course, ooh, what did I do here? Oh, that's right. To have one floating is quite nice with that. So it will work in a circle in the same kind of way. The circle's interesting because if you do a single one with pop the rice shapes there and there, you have a lot of space to play with on um, the outer edge of this. Um, looks almost like a weird bee. And of course we can do this kind of thing where it all floats. So that's quite fun. Um, did I do others? Yeah, I did do a ginkgo leaf kind of shape. And for this one, I felt that making use of these two sides that you know um, that curve inwards to put the rice shapes on was the way to go because it makes it all symmetrical. Um, and then we can get that there. And shadow again, highlight or patterns helps to bring different things out. So there's lots of possibilities. I'm just looking to see if I've missed out any of the major shapes. Oh, I did do, did I do, I did do a hexagon, because that was interesting, because hexagons have got three pairs of sides, so I'm going to add some dots in, and I'll have separate, I didn't mean to put that there, it's fine, it'll be fine. so and then shape and that fits in quite nicely and pop it there there's the version I did where I had those rice shapes um, attached to the actual side or corners of the hexagon and that gives a different kind of shape in the middle um, 
Again, I'll zoom out so you can see. And I, I put one big circle there, but yeah, I left it as the little ones each there. And the hexagon as well, this one was it nice, um, less cluttered when I chose to do these shapes at the top and bottom of the hexagon. And it gave plenty of space in the middle. I just put dots there, but that space is there for anything. The, the, the possibilities are endless once you've got the basics, basic lines and shapes in is how you bring out the shape or which parts you focus on. Do you focus on the background or do you focus, you know, do you focus on this kind of shape or do you focus on the background as in here? And auras and other things are all important. So those were really quite good fun to do. And I've realised I should really pop this. Oh, I can pop it that way. It might be upside down, but there's no right way up is there. So it'll fit in there. So I've had some fun with all of this. Um, I tend to favour adding shadow towards the point, you know, the bottom point of this, this kind of shape. But I also um, quite like adding shadow to the background and really bringing that shape to the forefront. I find that quite pleasing. And having these shapes floating above you know, in one way or another. I did try an odd shape, you know, wobbly shape as in the Pangaea um, reticulum, but it doesn't really work. But I didn't think it would, but I had to try it just to be sure. Um, if somebody can get that to work, please let me know and I'll be interested. Um, so yeah, so, you know, there's other shapes, so for this parallel, and it's not a parallelogram, is it? Trapezoid and um, a rhombus, which is slanty diamond. They all work. Um, so it's only the uneven one, really, that would be awkward to get it to work, I think. Kite shape would be similar to this, you know, it's it sort of, it's, yeah. So, I'm just beginning to lose the plot. My brain is just gone. Um, I'm rambling. So, I'm going to leave this one here for today. And I just hope that you found it interesting and you can take stuff from it. Um, I've, certainly, I've certainly enjoyed doing this. Uh, I think you can tell that. And this was interesting. It took me so long to get to a point. I thought right yes I can work with this one this is this this feels right for me it may not be the original form but it's morphed and changed as I've drawn various iterations and I think that's the biggest thing I can take from this and, and advice I can give is don't give up it's just keep going and see what happens and the magic thing for me was deciding to use another shape and suddenly things just started clicking into place and it wasn't long before I started, you can see, from this, to this, to this, to this. And suddenly you can see that progression in shape and form. So I found that, find that interesting looking back as well. So please take care of yourselves. And find time to be creative each day. And hopefully I'll see you back again soon. Take care for now. Bye bye.